What's up guys, welcome back to Renovation School. In this episode, I wanna show you how to transform a plain wall like this into a beautiful accent wall in just a few steps. After removing the electrical wall plates, I taped them all down just like this. And then I grabbed my stud finder and marked all the location of the studs on the whole wall. For this project, I'm using 5 8 by inch and a half primed MDF trim. I started nailing my top and the bottom piece into the studs that I previously marked. In a few seconds, I'm gonna show you how I cut the end parts. This is how that end piece looked like. I cut it in 45 degrees and then I put another piece on top there and marked it exactly where it needs to be cut. And before I nail down this last piece, this is the type of glue that I'm going to be using for all my seams on this project, just to ensure they're not going to come loose in the future. This is how it looks like after finishing all the trim work around the perimeter of this wall. By using my speed square, I made my first 45 degree mark and then I continued with the ruler to continue this line all the way to the other end. And then I cut my first piece, put it in place, and then I marked both sides of it so this way I know where exactly to put my glue. I applied the glue into the wall and then I put the trim on it and nailed it right into each stud. So now that the first piece is installed, it's time to move on to the rest of the project. I got my speed square and I'm drawing another 90 degree line. I'm going to continue that all the way to the bottom. As you can see here, I'm not drawing all my lines first because I've done this design many, many times. If it's your first time, it's a good idea to draw all these lines or use a chalk line, basically chalk line all your marks on the wall and then a step back, take a look at it. If you're satisfied with it, then continue and, you know, make your marks. For me, it's super easy and simple. I've done it many times, as I said. So I don't have to bother with that. I'm going piece by piece. I basically come up with these three main pieces. Basically, after I install these three pieces, which I'm gonna show you in a few seconds, I'm gonna move on to the rest of the project and make all the other lines according to these ones. There you have it guys, all the trim work is installed, it's time to do the finishing. I'm gonna go over all the nails just to make sure they're sitting below the surface and then I get my one and a half inch putty knife, I'm gonna go over all these holes just to make sure there's no debris sitting on them. 
And then this is the Dynapatch Pro product that I like to use here because it's crack resistant and it doesn't shrink. I'm going to apply a little bit extra on top because I'm going to be sanding it with the machine. This product is amazing, it does an amazing job filling all these holes. I'm using my 4 inch orbit sander and 220 grit sandpaper and as soon as I'm done with the machine I go over all those edges by hand just to ensure I get a very nice and a smooth finish. After the sanding is done it's time to do the caulking. I like to use Alex Flex stuff, it's pretty decent. I normally cut that tip in an angle like that, it just makes my life easier applying it. This is how I apply my caulking, I put a very nice bead on all these seams and then I go with my finger over it to smooth it out. In order to get the highest quality result, I'm planning on spraying the whole wall. So in order to spray, you have to cover up all these walls and floors just to be on the safest side. You don't want any over spray or any uh, spray dust sitting on the flooring or other walls and make you a lot of extra work. For this project I'm going to be using Sherwin William Promar 200 paint and it's going to be in flat sheen. I always recommend using flat paint for such jobs. It's just going to minimize the amount of imperfections to be visible later on when the job is done. It's very important to mix your paint very nice so you get a very nice and even coat throughout the whole job. On projects like this, I like to apply thin layers of paint but do multiple coats of it. It's very important to put the paint thin if you want to get the highest quality result. Whenever you're spray painting, it's very important to put a very nice quality mask on just to protect your lung against it. For this project, I'm using number 211 Grey Coat Tip and it's doing an amazing job. As you can see, it's applying the paint very nice and smooth and I'm putting the uh, machine on 2500 PSI on the highest setting basically. I normally don't remove my masking tape and the plastic stuff immediately as soon as I'm done. I normally wait at least like 40 minutes before I do it because there's still paint particles on the air. I want them all to land on my plastic and don't make any extra work for me later on. And uh, this way also closer to the wall there's like some wet paint on the ground if I walk on it. There is chances that I can transfer that from my socks or shoes right to the you know finished floor which is going to be horrible. So make sure you give it at least 35-40 minutes before removing everything from the walls. One more time, thank you very much for watching Renovation is School. If this video was any help to you, please don't forget to hit that like button and please consider subscribing if you haven't subscribed to my channel. Thank you very much. Till next time, peace.